Hi, I'm Deb Commodore, and I'm at Corsair Gallery, and this is my show called Animal Speaks. Um, been in Colorado Springs about 24 years, originally from the Midwest, from Ohio, where I went to uh, school at Columbus College of Art and Design, and then I moved out to Fort Collins to get my master's degree in painting. So it's a little bit about my art background. Um, I have always been an artist. I think I was just born one. Um, I grew up with three older brothers, so this was my way to, I think art was my way to find myself, since I couldn't do sports with them, they would always hit me in the head with a baseball, so <laughs> I would run away. <laughs> um, so I've always drawn or, or done something. Um, in high school, art just kind of saved me. So, um, you know, when I see high schools getting rid of the art programs, I always cringe because that's kind of what got me through that period um, and got me into something that I felt was me, you know, to go to art school gave me that option. Um, so I've been painting ever since or drawing or sculpting um, and um, my degree is in painting but I did a little bit of sculpting for about 15 years, did a lot of sculpting and I would uh, make these um, whimsical landscapes and whimsical animals and fire them and paint them with oils instead of using glazes. Um, since I was trained as a painter that seemed like a, a good way to get into it. And then um, probably about 20 years ago, I switched back to oil painting um, on canvas, or these are actually on a wooden surface. So they're called a cradle board. Um, my second love besides art is nature and, and trees. Um, I used to always play under them as a little kid and just felt, uh, the comfort that they would give um, to be under a tree and just to be hidden in there um, was kind of my favorite place to hang out. Um, and I've always been attracted to animals um, and pets. <laughs> and um, I don't think I've ever been more than six months without a pet. And now we have three and I guess I'm limited to that. So who knows? I'll sneak another one in one of these days. <laughs> um, so um, I've done animals before, and for this show, I just felt like it was time to bring them back in a different way. Um, I've developed a style of working with the landscapes, and I've been wanting to bring animals back, but couldn't figure out how to do that in the style that I work. So I was just waiting for my brain to figure that out and it's it's taken quite a while i i think as an artist we kind of um we do certain subjects or certain styles um and then we come back to them so it's kind of like a spiral our artistic journey where we might start with trees down there develop into something else evolve into something else and then we hit trees again or we hit animals again but we're at this level now instead of this level. So um, our paintings have evolved. Um, our cells have evolved. So our styles evolved too, um, as we evolve as people, as um, our thoughts evolve, our um, feelings evolve, um, and also our, our vulnerability to share more of ourselves as we become more mature artists. I am calling myself immature artists. <laughs> okay, immature artists, whatever. <laughs> um, so, um, this was the, one of the early ones of this series. Um, the very first one I did, I sold it before I finished it. Um, somebody saw it as I was working on it and said, I want first choice on that. So, um, it went pretty quick. The, the idea for this series, um, 
I've got all these books, and and one is called Animal yeah. Speaks. In yeah. it, they they give all the animals, and um, Ted Andrews is the author of Animal Speaks. They give all the different animals, and then the different meanings behind different cultures. So there's Native American meanings to certain animals, then there's Far Eastern meanings, and um, different different countries how these animals represent um, to folklore or um, or different ideas about what these animals bring to you. Um, then there's another book called um, Animal Guides, and it's it's kind of shows you if this animal shows up in your life, you know. Uh, what are they trying to tell us? Um, so when I had been doing animals before, that's what they were, a lot of them were based on, was if I would see a deer, what is that deer trying to tell me? And in the books, it was talking about gentleness. The deer is very gentle, um, but they're always moving. So they're very resilient in the day. They're not tied to one place. They're always moving around. Um, and then the owl, you know, is, some people think of it as black magic, but also uh, light magic. And I see them as um, showing us a lot of wisdom um, and showing us a different viewpoint. So, um, so you know, there was thoughts that, um, that we as artists and we as people give animals human characteristics. Um, but I think when you start to look at the animals, um, they've already had them. Maybe we learned them from them. Um, I, I think it's the opposite is true. Uh, I have a dog and, um, when we got her, she was young and we had an older dog and the older dog communicated with her how we wanted her to act. When the older dog passed, she was totally lost and became very anxious. So we worked with a trainer that told us, taught us how to read the dog instead of making the dog read us. Because the dogs look at mannerisms. They look at our faces. Um, they look at our eyes. They listen to tone, but they don't understand words. Um, so we learned similar mannerisms. Um, and one thing is, is when she shakes, she's shaking off anxiety. And I always thought she had a lot of itches. I don't know if she had a rash or something. Um, and, and the other thing is, you know, um, just following that and learning how much it meant to her to see a smile on her face. So, you know, instead of looking at her and being upset with her or frowning, you get a smile on your face and she, her, her disposition would change right around and, and she would feel more confident. Um, and with animals, it's the same thing um, with other animals. Um, the other thing is I uh, have a friend that has horses, three horses, three dogs, three cats. And she offered to watch our dog um, for us when we were out of town. And I had taken her to her ranch before. And I, I said, how do the dogs know that the horses aren't going to pick them? And how do the horses know? And she said, there's one horse that's in charge. And that horse will put its ears back if it doesn't want to be bothered. And then it lowers its head. And they know that when they see that, to, to leave the horses alone. And I said, how does Zoe know that? Because she's never been around horses. And, and it's like they have this... I don't know if it's telepathic or what, but they do have a way to communicate between species. And we don't give them credit for that. Um, so I, I just think we have a lot to learn um, from the animals. Um, like I said, the owl to me is, is like um, the hierarchy of the, the kingdom. It's like the knowledge keeper. Um, these pieces are very narrative. Um, I, I consider my landscapes narrative on an emotional level, and I consider these more narrative as a story, story level, kind of storytelling. Um, the hummingbirds, um, to me, are a symbol of joy. Um, 
So I like the idea that um, there's the wisdom, you know, and then the ravens are the messenger. And they're really, ravens and crows are really, really smart. Um, they actually have decided that they're about the level of chimpanzees and humans. They're about that same, that same level there in the way they process things. Um, so I think of it as the, the wisdom, and this is the mes messenger with the knowledge. And I always put hummingbirds in because there's got to be joy somewhere. <laughs> um, and in our lives, it's trying to balance that, you know, balance the wisdom with the joy and balance um, and how to get those messages to us um, with the raven. Uh, this one is called Passing the Knowledge. So I've got the, you know, the wisdom here. You know, he's big, he's holding the, the, the wisdom and very calm and, and quiet about it. But then there's the hummingbird here, um, which again is the joy. And the idea of this is, is this the wisdom or is this the wisdom? It's kind of working back and forth. Is the wisdom that that we understand that within each of us there is that joy and it's always our, at our core. But we get lost in all the other things that are happening around us. Um, and it's the wisdom to, to understand that that joy is always in there, even then it would, when it gets dark and, um, and life gets hard. Um, or is the, the wisdom keeper the big one, you know? <laughs> um, I, I think there's wisdom in all of the creatures um, and they, they can, you know, teach us quite a bit. Um, then this one is called Ascending Wisdom, um, and with the fox, that's, uh, the fox is a protector, so um, it's kind of like these guys are on guard while this, this one's taking off to spread, spread his story on the wisdom. And this one's called uh, Guardians of Wisdom and Joy. So again, you've got the owl and the hummingbird, and then the ravens kind of hidden underneath. Um, and that's just like the whole story. They're, they're the guardians for us. That if we just think of joy when we see hummingbirds and um, think of crows and ravens as bringing us, bringing us knowledge, bringing, they're the, the communicator from the owl to us. Um, as they come and tell us things. Then this one is the protector of wisdom and joy. So like I said, the, the fox is the protector. And then um, I think the hummingbirds too are sometimes telling the owl not to take themselves too seriously. Because just because you're wisdom, the wisdom keeper, um, if you look at some of the the wisdom keepers in our, in our lives, uh, like the Dalai Lama, I mean, that guy is pure joy. And oh my God, he carries so much knowledge and so much wisdom. But he's, you know, there's still that childlike wonder, that childlike sense of wonder. Um, and I see that as the hummingbird that's reminding, reminding us, reminding the owl. It's like, yeah, loosen up. <laughs> um, I used to say, um, Life isn't meant to be taken lightly, but it's meant to be lived lightly. Um, so that, that's kind of the idea on some of these. And then um, um, this one is called Hidden Secrets. And um, a lot of that has just been what I've been feeling the last year and a half <laughs> um, and that the idea is the fox is the protector but sometimes a protector doesn't feel very protected so um, he's like kind of looking out 
it, this wonderful, idyllic world, but he doesn't quite know how to get there. It's kind of like the world he saw before, but he doesn't know what this world, this world doesn't look like that anymore, feel like that anymore. It still looks like that, but it doesn't feel like that anymore. Um, so he's got, he's just a little cautious about whether to step out in it or, um, or to keep hiding, hiding behind the leaves. Um, so that's kind of that one. Um, and then this little one over here is called Awaken to Joy. And uh, again, the idea about that is, is combining wisdom with joy. Um, to bring out both aspects of that. Um, and then I forgot about that one. <laughs> that one up there is called the disciples. So you've got the, you know, the Dalai Lama turned into an owl. <laughs> and then you've got all the baby owls. Um, and so I just thought those, those owls are they're going to be growing up and having a lot of wisdom. So they must be the disciples, right? <laughs> um, so that was just a kind of a play on words. And they do. I mean, the, the big eyes that they have are just uh, just incredible. They're just taking it all in. Um, I learned. I was learning and reading about owls. There's, I think it's the the barn owl. It it swallows its food whole and head first always, and so it's taking in the head first, which is kind of representative of knowledge and um, meaning, but it it gets rid of all the parts that it can't digest. So it's kind of a, a metaphor for, um, for how we can take in knowledge and take in what we need, but get rid of all the rest, get rid of all the other garbage. It's just a, a different way to think about uh, taking in so much as we're being bombarded with information. Um, and just always imagine a hummingbird on your shoulder. <laughs> so um, I'd like to thank Abby very, very much because she did an amazing job hanging the show. Uh, I hope you get a chance to come out and see it. And um, and I, uh, I appreciate taking the time and, and listening. Thank you. <laughs>